think everyone's ready now. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Um, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and unceded territories of the Seashell Nation. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Committee of the Whole for July 22nd, 2020. Um, before we start, I just want to make sure there's no uh, declarations of conflict. Perfect. So can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? I can't see everyone, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. Can you change your Perfect. view? Or are you on your iPad? I'm on my iPad. Okay. So I'm assuming everyone has a uh, motion, so we can um, adopt the agenda. Um, so now we'll move on to th item 3.1, appointments and delegations. We have Colin Stanfield, um, Executive Director, Sunshine Coast Regional Economic Development Organization, and Christy Fairholm Mater, Founder Director of Coast Communi Coastal Communi Community Society Procurement Initiatives Group. So I'll turn it over to them and thank you. Wonderful, thank you. I'm like just jumping right to it, right? Well, um, good afternoon, Mayor and Council, and thank you for having us here today for anyone who hasn't met me yet. Yeah, my name is Colin Stansfield. I'm the Executive Director of Scrito, the Sunshine Coast Regional Economic Development Organization. Uh, we're grateful for this opportunity to be with you today to talk about a policy mechanism that we believe has transformative potential as a strategy for regional economic development and recovery. Uh, as an organization and working in collaboration with our partners on the Business and Economic Recovery Task Force. Uh, we're taking a multi-pronged approach to development and recovery. We've opened a business recovery center as a way to support local businesses and entrepreneurs to navigate the oftentimes complicated mix of federal, provincial, local, and corporate relief measures. We're collaborating in the delivery of several key business support programs, including the Tourism Resiliency Program with Sunshine Coast Tourism the Digital Economy Rapid Relief and Response Program with Innovation Island uh, and Business Resiliency Program with Sunshine Coast Credit Union. Just this week, we've scaled our Buy Now, Shop Later gift card program onto the province-wide Support Local BC platform, a site that has generated more than $90,000 of gift card sales actually since launching at the beginning of April. We are nearly ready to launch a refreshed investment attraction program uh, including a brand new website that promotes the economic advantages of doing business here on the Sunshine Coast. And of course, we continue to actively support a number of different community economic development initiatives. And while all of these activities certainly do merit deeper discussion today, we are here to focus on social procurement, uh, to not only applaud the district for having embedded social value into its procurement policy, but also to encourage you to double down on that great work by prioritizing the advancement of social procurement in your upcoming strategic planning sessions, by joining Gibsons and the SCRD as members of the Coastal Communities Social Procurement Initiative, mm -hmm. and by taking the next steps to book training sessions for elected officials, staff, and local suppliers. And so without any further ado, and so that you don't have to listen to my voice, I'd like to invite Christy Fairholm Mater from Scale Collaborative, who are acting as project leads for the Coastal Community Social Procurement Initiative to, to share a presentation about social procurement generally and CCSPI specifically. And so Christy, I'll, I'll pass it to you. Thanks, Colin. So I'm just going to share my screen um, start my slideshow and here we go. Let me make sure I can. Okay, so can everybody see that? Yep, all cleared up. So um, yeah, thank you for uh, clarifying sort of, you know, who I am. So I'm the project manager of the Coastal Community Social Procurement Initiative. But the initiative was founded and is a membership driven initiative by um, local municipalities across Vancouver Island and the coast. So this is a municipal um, municipal led and a governed initiative um, that uh, we've been contracted to deliver. So I'm going to talk a little bit really quickly in probably five minutes or so. You know, what is the big picture of social procurement, um, how it can be helpful in terms of uh, shifting and, and supporting recovery in your local economies as COVID um, and, and in local economy, economic development, regardless whether COVID was happening or not. So just as a broad picture is that, you know, the public, public spend annually is significant, right? Is that it's billions of dollars that get spent into communities and most of it gets spent at the local level. Um, on Vancouver Island, the coast, it's a $1.8 billion spend across the communities 
on goods and services. So, and then infrastructure spend is on top of that. So the, the amount of spend that we, we that, that municipalities put into, into our local communities is, is, not, is not a small amount and it does have the potential to make a really positive economic impact in, in different ways. So there's some trends in procurement that have been taking place. You know, for a long time, it was, it was really focused on price and quality um, and being very risk adverse. So lowest price quality, it got the bid. And then we saw in sort of the 1960s that there was an integration of environment and having consideration around the impact on environment as well. And so, and it, and it looked at sort of a more engagement. There was a shift around engagement with community um, and, and trying to like be a, good, be a good corporate citizen, that kind of stuff. And now we really see that there's a potential for procurement to really not only um, have price quality environment be there, but when we begin to layer social and we look at the social impact and the community benefit of procurement dollars, then we look at the transformative impact that procurement can have. So instead of being just the buying the stuff that we need for our organization, it begins to look at how can we use our procurement to actually align to our strategic plan, align to our values and create positive community benefits um, locally and in other communities where our, our suppliers might be located. So this is this, this emerging trend over the past 10 years that is really beginning to gain some steam around integrating that social and community benefit aspect. So, and what is social procurement? It's leveraging a social and community value from your already existing procurement. So these are not new dollars, it's being intentional about your procurement. And so procurement has an impact regardless. This is being able to think about how do you want your procurement to have an impact? in your local community and what kind of benefit will it have? So you're still looking at that purchaser value, what you need, what vendors can supply, but what is the value that this brings to community? And there's different ways that you can begin to quantify and look at that. And out of that, we begin to talk about community value and procurement becomes a tool for building healthy and, and powerful and strong communities. And there's two realms of it. We talk about social purchasing, uh, which is your goods and services spend. This can be very simple from, you know, the spends that, that you make in which we call your P-card spends, um, your below threshold spends, your direct awards, your goods and services. And then there's the larger projects, which are the community benefit agreements and infrastructure projects. And we use the word community benefit agreements as it was originally intended, not how the BC government has defined community benefit agreements, just to clarify that language around there. Um, but there's two avenues um, from which procurement can begin to be mobilized and, and impact that local and, and community economy. And then we, as I mentioned before, like when we begin to align it to community priorities, when we begin to align it and think about it more than just money, but around, around delivering a variety of different impacts and benefits, then it really does become a tool for building resilient and healthy communities. So around COVID, I mean, COVID is impacting all of our communities on the coast everywhere. I'm based in Victoria um, and it's, we're seeing, you know, the impacts here with our tourism sector being hit hard, um, our nonprofit sector being hit pretty hard, restaurants, arts and culture and so on. And, and that we're hearing echoes. It looks different, of course, in different communities, but we're seeing echoes of that across the whole region from our, from our partners and members. Um, and that small businesses are really, really being impacted significantly in those sectors and in others. And that it can be, we're seeing that, you know, that dip in local, uh, in, you know, that rise in unemployment rates. We're seeing, you know, some of the stuff that's happening with government is trying to shore that up, but there has been an impact in employment as well. Um, and so again, like looking at how procurement can play a specific role in terms of the recovery of, of your of stabilization, resilience and recovery of your local economies. So the question really is, you know, are the dollars you're spending anyways, are they being extracted from your local economy or are they supporting your local economy? And so being able to look through that and think about how you can contribute to your local economy in an intentional way um, is, <clears throat> is, uh, is a really critical question. And just from the 14 local governments within our membership that we could track their SOFI reports on, um, is that it's not an insignificant spend. As I mentioned, it's 1.8 across the region, but it's about half a million, um, half a million, half a billion dollars in, in over 25K spend. So it, again, it's not insignificant. And then there's other institutional purchasers in our communities as well. So municipal governments have been taking the lead in this, um, but we also have been reaching out and beginning to look at, you know, what are school boards and school districts and hospitals and policing and the ferries? Like, like there's really a lot of institutional anchor institutions that combining the spend and being thoughtful and intentional around it could really be a part of, of what we're doing. And that over here, this, this is just looking at a, a scan that was done that demonstrates the impact of how being able to support local economies tends to have a really strong economic multiplier effect. 
So always asked, is it agree? Is it legal? And you know, yes, it is. Uh, this is legal, and so the trade agreements, everything we talk about, has been vetted by <laughs> lawyers and trade agreements. And in in you're on the right side of of the. I'm going to say or we're in the black, right? Is that <laughs> we're in the black on this stuff? Um, and so it's about asking. You can't, you know, the trade agreements require transparency and competition to be allowed. So you can't restrict competition. You can't say local only. But what you can do is say. What is the impact on our local community that you bring and what are you going to do for our local community through your purchase and then everybody can bid on that and can talk about that um, that there are trade agreements have exceptions for contracting with nonprofits and social enterprises and that trade agreements have financial thresholds that underneath those financial thresholds you can do direct awards or you can do um, local only purchases or you can do things like that that then allow you to think through your policy in that kind of way and um, so in terms of just connecting directly to recovery, I mean, you start utilizing, looking at your trade agreements, exceptions and thresholds is that often municipalities have their thresholds way below what trade agreements allow, you know, is there a potential to increase that, that threshold in during this time to be able to provide more economic benefit to um, small businesses. And that's, are you really thinking through unbundling your larger contracts? So we find that a lot of small businesses or SMEs and so on, they don't bid because they're intimidated by the process, right? Or it's too large or they don't have the capacity, but by unbundling those contracts and beginning to split it out, then it allows smaller businesses, local businesses to bid on it. And that's what we see is that through the social procurement process is that those, that opening the door and then providing capacity building and training allows those, those firms to bid and to, to learn and to build their capacity in the process. To be able to ask your people, your, your um, prime contractors to utilize subcontractors, to ask for community benefit on your construction infrastructure project and to get ready by identifying those shovel ready projects and putting a community benefit and social procurement um, requirement into that. So around CCSBI, there's 21 members currently across the island and you can see here they are. Um, and the purpose is to really uh, support municipal and local governments and the MASH sector to mobilize their procurement for greater impact. This is who delivers the services. So I just wanted to put us up there so you can see that the contract is um, David and Larry on the left hand side are procurement experts. Myself, I work with vendors and work with goods and services vendors and social enterprises. That's our expertise and we project manage the initiative. And then Rory brings forward uh, the construction and infrastructure expertise. So we really took an ecosystem approach in trying to support both procurers and vendors to be able to be successful at, at um, integrating and moving forward policy as well as delivering and, and so on. And when you become members, and most of you are, then you really get access to training, to courses, to community of practice, to resources, to templates, to impact measurement. Like we built a lot of stuff on the back end, as well as providing um, each community gets a certain amount of hours of consultation as well. So the key steps forward, we just, you know, this is in the, the PowerPoints and sent out to you and the resources that we sent previously. That's really become a member, train your teams, map your current state. And these are not conceptual. You don't have to do these all in order. Some people do them in different orders uh, to develop your policy, to test and pilot and move forward um, your policy in action, uh, to prepare for your infrastructure projects, and then to build your local vendor capacity. And that's part of what I do specifically specifically is come and do presentations and capacity building specifically for the vendor community so they understand what's being looked for and how to respond to those bids. So upcoming, um, also getting really granular on steps to take is that we have a number of different training sessions. We have over 15 webinars that you can access that get really into different aspects of social procurement, but then we have standard ones. So social procurement 101, which we deliver to council members, to um, senior leadership, to sort of community stakeholders, really high level of what is this and how does it work and, and answer all those questions. Uh, 201 is specifically for your organization. So bringing your staff team or cross department together and saying, how do we really create that social value criteria, that menu, that evaluation and align it to our community priorities. So that's a, a session we do. And then 301 is specifically around infrastructure and construction because it gets a little complicated and you can see the audience is there. And then we provide that, that individualized consultation. There is a um, big city Victoria just launched our first request for information. Um, press for information and we're building a database of vendors across the region um, that are social value vendors uh, that can respond and be available um, to for those direct awards or for those p-card buys or for those small spends um, but they also then can bid and start building their capacity for larger um, bids as well 
And then we are also doing an impact measurement framework and we have a partnership with Royal Roads. And so they're hiring a student coming September who will just help the communities begin to measure your impact of what's the impact of your spend and how do we begin to look at not only how much you're spending and what your intentions around that, but working with the vendors to be able to measure out on their impact. So we can begin to, to look at the impact on training apprenticeships, employment, supply chains, community benefits and, and the structure, the, the real benefits that are provided. So I'm going to leave you with the website. You can go and check it out. Um, Colin has, a, you know, connect and we can schedule training. And we're basically, anyone who's a member, we're here to, to serve and, and support you to move this forward. Thank you very much. Do you have much, any Christine. questions, I guess? are all stunned and amazed and totally excited by the opportunity that is coming. So, oh. Yes. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, I'll have to use the, I think I have to use the, the hand, right? I can't see, I don't have that option. So someone else is gonna, ha I think, have to, I can't see anyone's hands. Oh. I've got my hand up. I'll ask a question. <laughs> so you're talking about a vendor database. And so is that Vancouver Island or is it also going to be including the Sunshine Coast? Because we won't typically use vendors that are on Vancouver Island in most cases. Most vendors that will come here will either be from the lower mainland or local. Yeah, so if you release your RFI in your community, then we have a... Oh, it's a request for information. Okay. So it's released by each community into your own community that says, so it's, it's a chance for you to look at who's in your community, what's the social value that they provide, how does that look? And then we have an information sharing question that says, would you be willing to share across the network? So you know, it might be relevant for Powell River, or it might be relevant for Quathet. And when we talked to Powell River about it, it's like, yeah, like it's also a way to support your vendors to get business throughout the region as well. And so they were like, yeah, our Powell River businesses probably would like to be able to do business with Courtney Comox and, and extend that. And so it just allows us to know who's out there, who provides, um, who's providing different kind of uh, goods and services within our communities. And, but it is, it is focused on your community. And then you can, you can ask vendors if they want to be a part of that database so is that work that we do or is that work that we get support in doing it's work that you do and we support you to do but but it's not we don't we don't host the rfi you host the rfi yeah okay. uh, any other questions councillor mclean uh, i'm going to do a two-part question to our staff first and then i'm going to pass it off to uh christine collin um, so to our finance department, um, who is typically, or do we have one staff that typically manages um, purchasing or is it more of a shared responsibility? Because I don't believe we have a purchase, purchaser at Seashelt. Um, but, and if you can, do you know if they have a purchaser? Then no, we're, it's decentralized. So everybody makes their own purchases. However, the finance department does have a staff member that uh, assist with the, the, the pushing out uh, the RFPs onto websites and things like that. And then do you know offhand if the SRD has a dedicated purchaser? I believe they do, yes. Yeah, that's what. Yes, yes they do. Okay. Um, so over to Christy, uh, given that we have a decentralized purchasing division, essentially, um, everyone plays a role in purchasing. Um, so essentially, um, you would be able to provide training to the wide variety of our staff who do that purchasing. That's right. Okay. Thank you. And that's where we find it most effective is being able to train full staff teams. So everybody has an understanding of how this aligns and helps achieve your organization's goals. Um, and then different people can look at how it, like part of the plan of social procurement 201, that training is to really say, now how do we begin to implement that within our organization with the various different um, departments that might be purchasing? And most most um, organizations in our membership are decentralized purchasing. Okay, um, because yeah, I do have a bit of a concern about the staff leadership and someone who moves it forward. Um, but I, I um, <laughs> it's probably Dave. <laughs> uh, I see him smiling. Like <laughs> I just want to say the other way council gets involved is by policy, right? So um, one one is training, and internally would be providing policy that supports. 
um, social security. All right, thank you. Does anyone have questions? Okay, uh, uh, yes. So our, we just redid our, our policy and I forwarded on to Colin. I don't know if Christy's seen it. I'm wondering, is that set up the way we need to have it set up in order to be able to support social procurement? I would need to ask Larry Berglund or David LePage to look at it because I'm not a procurement policy expert. Um, I'm a project manager and I work with vendors. So, but we are, that's part of what we will provide is to look at your policy and provide suggestions and support. The first time you sort of integrate it into an RFI or an RFQ or an RFP, like all those language, procurement languages, I'm becoming very I can say the words now. <laughs> so, um, but you know, is that is that we provide that support to to really make sure that you're following and, and implementing best practices, and that um, and that we found that uh, members have found that to be invaluable. Yeah. So right. we're uh, happy to take a look and provide provide um, support to to strengthen it or to say yeah, it looks awesome or however however it is. And one of the things that um, I know we Dave and I were actually looking at the website. I think a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we were looking at what is the cost, right? Yeah. The cost is two times our AVICC membership because we are part of the coastal community. And I think we figured that it was what, $2,400? Is that right, Dave? 28, so our okay. annual AVC, AVICC is uh, 1408. Right. So, so double that would be 20, 28, just over $2,800. You need to talk to Josie. So that cost was um, for two years of the initiative. Um, and Josie Osborne, the mayor of Tofino, is the person who, who does the membership um, onboarding. And so I'm not sure if she's going to shift it to an annual or keep it at sort of like the two years, two years. So I think, yeah, I would suggest connecting to her. Mm -hmm. So on the, on the website, it still says our annual would be two times our ADICC membership. So we can we can touch base with Josie around that, but we also need to have a budget. Yeah, I will get in contact with her this week. And I have a we have a um, a steering committee this Friday, so maybe we'll bring that up, Colin, around around um, if there's any changes to that how that's presented on the website. Okay, Councillor McLean has a question. So along a similar vein, on page five of our agenda, um, which is some materials provided. Uh, by you, it says from November 2018 to October 2020, the Coastal Communities Social Procurement Initiative will assist coastal communities to advance social uh, procurement. What happens after October 2020? Is will the initiative continue on? I guess it's the, the main question I have. Yeah, from my understanding, is that the intention is that the initiative is a five-year in total initiative um, because we feel like the process of introducing the concept, doing the training, supporting the implementation, measuring the impact, we can't do that in two years. And so the steering committee has requested that it be extended to a five-year total initiative. Once um, social procurement and these tools become best practices and get integrated into your organizations, they just become like regular, right? Um, but because it's new, um, we see that 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 five years will, will give enough time to, to provide that support to build the resources to do the tools as well as to support the culture change that takes place as part of um, thinking about procurement in a different way. Good to know that we're not signing onto a thing that will last two months. <laughs> yes, you might, if it does, you'd get a great discount. <laughs> so, but that is the intention, yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? I have a question, I guess, for staff. Um, this would be for Dave. So is this something that we have, you know, the finance available in our budget to move forward? Should we choose to do that? Or is it something that we need to wait until the next budget to move it forward? Um, in my view, we've had some things not go through this year. So there probably is like, like some training and you know, uh, conferences and things. So there's probably money there to do it this year and then we'll budget for it next year and ongoing. Okay, and our process, would you want us to bring it up, uh, make a re recommendation from, from here to council potentially to move yes, this forward? Yep, to uh, 
to become a member or to enter into a membership. Okay. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the regional joint purchasing group in Victoria. Um, that's something that I could see have great value here. Um, we've tried it a little bit in the past uh, to limited success. So I I'm wondering what is the secret sauce in Victoria to bring all these people together? Yeah, I would really recommend talking to Leah Hamilton, who's the buyer over in Victoria. And uh, Leah is just a champion of collaboration and community and trying to find ways to work together. So um, I know that they've there. I know that they have. I mean, the last one that they did in terms of doing a social value purchase of waste bins, they took it forward to their joint purchasing consortium and integrated. And so they they two of them came together and decided that they would bid on that together. And so there's some neat ways that they've worked together. And so I just highly recommend connecting, connecting to Leah and getting into sort of the nuts and bolts of how that works. Cause it's got a longer, it's a bit longer um, than the initiative. Like that joint purchasing group was there a bit prior. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that we could really benefit from here on the coast. Um, yeah. Especially since we're all small local governments get a little scale and get some good value out of our purchasing. Yeah. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? No? Does anyone Thank want to make a motion? <laughs> I will, I'll send you the PowerPoint. So that's the final thing I would say, yeah. Awesome. Um, so does anyone want to make a motion right now or we're Claim, do you want to do one? I was hoping you had something ready. <laughs> I don't have anything ready, but I think I could do something. Um, that uh, the committee recommend to council that um, we take out a membership in the Coastal Communities Social Procurement Initiative. Is that what it's called? Okay. Do we have a seconder for that? Perfect. All in favor? Awesome. Excellent. Passed. Um, and finally, any further questions for Colin or Christy? Okay. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for coming and doing the presentation. Um, thank you so much. Take care. Enjoy you. your day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. So moving along. <laughs> um, I don't think we have anything else to talk about. New business, business items. Um, so I guess, can I get a motion to adjourn? Perfect. Second, all in favor? Perfect. Thank you, everyone.